The night Whitney Houston died in her hotel room at the Beverly Hilton, she had planned to attend the annual gala for her mentor, hitmaker Clive Davis. Houston, 48, was getting ready for the party, her gown laid out in preparation, when she drowned in the bathtub, in a foot of water so hot she suffered burns from it, cocaine and heart disease were cited as contributing factors. Downstairs, the gala went on as planned, even though Houston's body had yet to be removed from her room, writes Garrett Kennedy, author of Didn't We Almost Have It All, in defense of Whitney Houston, a collection of unsparing, deeply personal essays on the singer's life and career that arrives 10. That decision, which Kennedy, then a reporter on the scene for the Los Angeles Times, calls grotesque, was merely another in a series of heartbreaking indignities that did not end with Houston's death. In 2018, Kanye West reportedly spent $85.000 on a notorious 2006 photo of Houston's drug-strewn bathroom. The picture, taken by a family member, had initially been sold to the National Enquirer, which put it on the cover, inside Whitney's drug den. West used the photo as an album cover for rapper Pusha T, recycling Houston's humiliation for a younger generation that knew her mostly as an unwitting provider of cautionary, crack is whack drug memes. H.E. knew we'd get the joke, Kennedy writes. After all, we were all in on it. In early 2020, Houston's estate sent a holographic version of the singer on tour, hoping that an uncanny valley version of Whitney would provide the income stream that her relatively paltry musical vaults had not. Unlike its real-life counterpart, this Whitney didn't cause trouble. It was forever smiling and thin and never late for a show. It didn't look too young or too old, or, the closer you got, much like Whitney at all.